uh, Omi on, you know, restoring that plus one to bonuses, that man, that helps a lot too. Yeah. Oh and yeah. Especially for one action, that's 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 awesome. Yeah. It's not just plus one to hit; it's plus one to crit too. So. It's so really nice. As the succubus falls, the blood wolf disappears, and of course, you guys killed. You know, you made pretty quick work of Kavnakash. All of a sudden. The hair on the back of your neck, and and you start to hear a lot of you start to hear a lot of noise outside of the tower, but down below. And as you look down, you know this tower, which is rather tall. You start to see a bunch of troglodytes, probably a hundred troglodytes surrounding the tower, and they're all looking up, and they're still seeing this this aeon orb. And it looks like it looks like these it looks like the Zolgos or these troglodytes are going into a frenzy down below, you know, just looking up at the tower and they're raising their their spears and they're banging their weapons on, on their shields. Maybe we can throw Kagnakash down there, or maybe his head. Well, I wanted to scoop up that mall and go over and like show it to him and tell him to get the flip out of here, man. I like that. So you guys are basically taking the head of Kavnakash and taking his big, beautiful maul that's glowing and you're holding it up over the ledge to where all these Zolgas can see you. That's what you guys are doing? Yeah. Dude, that is awesome. Because as you do that, you know, and it looks like they're fixing to storm the tower just as you guys take a minute and decapitate him and you get to the edge of the tower and you hold up the hammer. Emu holds up the head of Kavnakash and then all of a sudden the Zolgos, they go quiet down below and then one by one over the next 30 seconds or so, all of these Zolgos, they start to disperse. And, you know, this is a, an area where it's all rolling hills, you know? So as, you know, as you're displaying, you know, your victory and you being triumphant, yes, they are starting to disperse. Some are going back over the bridge. Some are swimming through the moat. And it looks like they're starting to, to leave the area of the Aeon Tower. And as all of these Zolgos are dispersing this hundred or so Zolgos, you feel this tingling sensation. You know, like the hair is standing up on the back of your necks and on your arms and stuff. And you you feel this sense of calm, right? So all of you are healed back up to full life. All yeah. of your wounds, you just kind of look at each other. What's that? I think my rash is gone. And Your I'm rash not, is even I'm, gone. I showed yes. you, like, look, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, man, yes. we can take a look at that when we get back to camp or something. <laughs> I'm glad your rash is feeling better. but <laughs> It's gone. It's literally gone. And all of your wounds as you're looking at each other, except for Zero, of course, because he didn't take anything. He was smart saying out of the way. I like that. All of your wounds are just disappearing as nothing ever happens. And all of you have this very light glow coming over you. Sort of like what the, you know, the, the color of the ion orb up there. You know, that light bluish. You have all have this blue glow over you. And this soothing, this soothing voice is in all of your heads thanking you for protecting the Ion Orb. And you all have received a permanent blessing, a daily, uh, a daily feature that you can use on a daily basis. And I will go ahead and put this in the chat. And this soothing voice thanks you for saving you know, the Aeon Tower. 
and it tells you that it is giving you a blessing. Uh, uh, you know, this will last you your entire life and you can use this every day. And it is called the reflection of life. And everybody has that. It is a healing spell that you can use every day. Well, it is a healing feature. And I'll go ahead and put that there. It's called reflection of life. And you regain double the normal uh, hit point number of hit points when resting. So meaning that you regain double your constitution modifier multiplied by your level. So the healing you gain from long-term rest is similarly doubled. In addition, you can focus this healing energy to accelerate your body's natural healing process even further. And it takes two actions to activate. You can use it once a day and you gain fast healing three for one minute. The, this amount of fast healing increases by one for every two levels past the fifth level. And mentioning fifth level, congratulations, all of you are level five now. As well. So you'll start hey, well. level three spells, which is really cool. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I, I saw as soon as I said you were level five, I get I saw that big smile come over your face, and I'm like, he's already thinking level three spells already. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, when, we're, when we mean we're cleaning the ziggurat, we really clean it. We do the deep clean. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And that lady's voice reminds me of my mama goblin Shimu Emu. <laughs> Shimu Emu. <laughs> Yeah, I'm named after her. She's she's a beautiful goblin woman. <laughs> so you guys got a, a a permanent daily power, which is pretty cool. You save the ion tower, and some voice came over you. This it was actually a male voice, a very soothing male voice, and. Yeah. Like you can mom. use this once a day, just like your mom, Shimu Emu. So you're now level five, and you have this beautiful uh, mall. You also see that uh, this this woman that transformed from a succubus to an ordinary human woman. She has this satchel that's kind of slung over her shoulder. And she has she has a satchel, and it looks pretty. It looks pretty. Uh, it looks like there's quite a few things in it as well. So uh, I'm sure you guys want to know what you get. So let me go ahead and we'll uh, take care of some inventory now. Don't forget, you guys got all that other stuff in in the party sheet. When you get back to Aberton, you guys can take care of that. Now, as for Let's see, as for loot. Now, Kavnikash has a beautiful mall. Okay, so I'm also, I'm gonna add that in there. He has a religious wooden symbol. Consider junk to you, uh, Kang. Yeah, I... He has I can sort of throw it off the tower. Yeah, sure. You throw it over. You chuck it as far as you can. You hit one of the. You hit one of the other Zolgos, and it knocks him over. Boom. <laughs> there is a suit of scale mail. A full suit of scale mail, and then there is also a wand. And it's it's like a it's like a baton. It's like a foot long. And it has, uh, it actually has clerical symbols on it. And you can actually, you can look at it and you can tell that this is a wand of healing. No shit. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> no shit. Yes, it is a wand of healing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and because it's clerical, you're not going to need to try to identify it or anything like that because of the runic inscriptions on it being clerical already. So basically you can use this wand once a day, right? So you can use it once a day as a healing spell. There is overcharge and you'll need to read about overcharge, uh, which you could actually destroy the wand. So, but you get a free, a free heal every day. At least one, but you know you run the risk of blowing it up if you use it more. Oh, right. 
But yeah, you get a wand, you have that beautiful maul. Uh, anybody want to cast Detect Magic or, or anything like that? Or oh, me does. You guys have that. That's a cantrip, correct? Yep. Yeah, it's it's definitely magical, Omi. That's for sure. It's got a, it's got a bright glow to it. It's definitely got a bright aura to it. Now, as for the the shoulder sack, the haversack that the the female human has, uh, there are quite a few things in it. Right? First, there is uh, there are some herbs. There are several crystal vials. There is a demonic mask, a demonic looking mask. There's a, a set of elegant female clothing you could probably sell. There are, uh, there's a, an elixir. There is also several small travel bottles of spirits. And there is a beautiful golden statuette of a flying fish. And, la and it's probably worth probably 11 gold, 11, 15 gold. And last but not least, as you're kind of emptying everything out on the very bottom in a little side compartment, you could tell that there was something in there even though the bag was empty. You find a small leather bound personal journal. And inside of the journal, uh, it talks about all kinds of things. You know, it talks about her recruiting Nemia, you know, that druid that went to Averton. Uh, it talks about her and her dealings with Kavnakash. Just all kinds of stuff, you know, setting up the tower, trying, you know, all the failures of trying to destroy the orb. But on one of the last pages, there's something that was actually quite interesting and I'm going to put it into the chat. And it says, Kavnakash, she basically, she came to the con conclusion that Kavnakash was sent by superiors of some type. And they were from, you know, Kavnakash is from this place called Moonstone Hall beneath the city of Eskadar, which Eskadar is on the island, which is on the very southernmost uh, part of the island and it's called Eskadar. And this, you know, this succubus, her name was Beleni, because it has her name on the journal Beleni, B-A-L-E-N-N-I, Beleni. She says that she suspects that Kavnakash's superiors are powerful priests of Zev Gavazib. All, uh, although Moonstone Hall isn't likely a temple to that deity, but rather basically a temple that was once dedicated to some other deity. And now these powerful priests and these superiors of Kavnakash have basically overtaken Moonstone Hall. That's basically what she's, what she's saying in her journal. So uh, I want to show you guys the map of the Starstone Isle, which I don't think I've shared this yet, but here you guys are on the Isle of Aaron, which is the northernmost smaller island of the two Starstone Isle Islands. And you guys are here at Aberton, right, where the pointer is. And you can see that Eskadar is all the way down to the very bottom. But you're at the Aeon Tower, which is in the middle on the eastern part of the island. So you're probably about maybe... You're probably 50 miles from Aberton and 50 miles from Escadar. So, you know, you know that you've got business still you need to take care of in Aberton. Uh, you know, you've saved the mayor. You've also saved Harlock Hamdale, you know, the leader of the Hermitage of the, of the Blessed Lightning Temple. So you know that this, this new, you know, this, this new lead that you got uh, yeah, it looks like you're going to need to to head down to Escadar to the south. Which, you know, Escadar, and then, you know, being the the new entrepreneurs that you are, you know that there's a heck of a lot larger population in Escadar to where you could run a circus, or maybe run a couple of shows. 
So, so what do you think? You guys want to head back to what do you guys want to do? You guys want to head back to Aberton, or you guys want to? What's that? We have, we have to go get all the wagons first. Yeah. Well, yeah, you've got a lot of people. You're, you know, you're basically in charge of now, and, and basically you're needing to be after them, seeing that, uh, you know, Thunder or Myron is is dead. So you I mean you have the professor to help you as well. But yeah, we'll we'll say that you guys uh, take you know take the fifty miles and you, know, you can get by the end of the day. You can force march it and and get back to Aberton as the sun is coming down. And you know when when you get back to Aberton, you know you get rested up. You know you're greeted by the mayor. I mean you guys are kind of stars now. You know what I mean in, in Aberton. I mean, you've saved the town, you saved the hermitage. I mean, you've done a lot of good on on this isle. And as you guys return back to Aberton, you know, all of the people are grateful. The mayor greets you as well. Uh, also, as you can as you as you get there, your buddy Harlock Hamdeal's there too. And he usually he didn't, you know, you know that he really wasn't a, a visitor of the city too often. But with everything going on, you know, Harlock and the mayor have gotten together and Harlock's, you know, explaining to them that, you know, this wasn't the intention of the hermitage. And, you know, he doesn't put any blame of the city actually destroying the island, right? But what Harlock is saying that the Aeon Orb is starting to fail. The power, it's it's not as strong as as what it once was. And he told you that back when you guys were at the Hermitage, right? Before you went to the tower, you know, in, in his 25 years of being the leader of the Hermitage, he had been visiting the Iron Tower and he could actually see it just digressing in, in power. So that you get back, you, you know, you get with the mayor, you meet with Harlock, the people greet you, you know, there's a huge town, you know, all of, everybody's invited from the circus. You know, everybody's there. You guys have a, there's a huge celebration for a day or two. And, you know, you guys are, you guys are basically rock stars now for, you know, cleansing the Hermitage and saving Aberton and, and the Iron Tower. They hold a big ceremony for you guys for a couple of days and they treat you guys good. And the mayor pronounces you as the finale to all of these, all of the ceremony and the, you know, this multiple day shindig. He pronounces you as Abertonians in perpetuity. So you guys are now honorable Abertonians. And, you know, back to reality, the party's over. You know, you have some information uh, about this, this new hermitage or, or this new temple that that you need to check out and you are in control you know that the all of the the folks of the circus of wayward wonders they all see you as heroes now they see you as their leaders so you can put up more circus shows but you know that you know the town of aberton it's not large enough for, and it's not wealthy enough to continue to run circuses so what would you guys like to do with your traveling circus and whatnot? Um, Time to move on, huh? Yep. Yeah, initially I would like to try and do as much research as I can about Zeb Goods. Zeb? Sure. See if I know anything or... Yeah, you reading over to the temple. Yeah, you could head over to the temple, and you know you can get with a member Nellan Drend, the yeah. banker slash uh, you know priest of Aberton. Yeah, you can do that, and you guys can research this deity for the couple days during this you know ceremony and celebration, and I'll get you some information in an email, and yeah, that will be for your anything. Anybody else want to do anything? while you have a couple of days of downtime? Um, I think we go through and sell off a lot of the stuff we have in the party sheet if we can, and then maybe buy some stuff. Sure. So do you guys want, uh, I can leave the game up and running, uh, but the last thing, 
are you guys going to head to Escadar? Because Escadar is about 50 miles away. It'll take the circus a couple of days to get there because it is 50 miles. You could probably travel about with all your wagons and, you know, stuff like that. All of the people, probably two days it would take to get there. Now, the one thing that I will tell you this, and we'll finish on this. Now, you do know that Escadar is the home city of the Celestial Menagerie. <laughs> so you've all been to Escadar, and you know that Mistress Dusklight, you know, the evil mistress that runs the Celestial Menagerie Circus, aka your competition now, that is their home. That's their home court. That's their home territory. So are you guys going to take the circus and just pull right into Escadar and start? I think, yeah. The show? I think, yeah. I do too. I agree. Right across the street. <laughs> Big old poster of us. <laughs> I love it. So we will go ahead and continue. We'll say that uh, as you guys finish the celebrations, you do all of your research, and I'll get you that in an email, Kang. You get the circus, you lead the circus the 50 miles or the two days to Escadar, and Escadar is off in front of you as you're approaching. And that's where we'll end. So cool. great game. Great. That was that was that was a that was a memorable fight, that's for sure. For sure. Real quick, can we uh, get that mall identified to figure out if we're going to show it? Or keep yes, it? yes. During yes, turn the during the two days, that mall is a uh, it is a plus one striking mall. I've gone ahead and identified it, and uh, it is a uh, bludgeoning hammer, and it is a massive warhammer that must be swung with two hands. And it, it uh, is plus one to hit and plus one to damage. Nice. So, yeah, it had basically in Pathfinder 2, there's two different types of runes. So this weapon has a, a weapon potency rune. And you can also, you can replace these and upgrade these runes as well. So you can eventually take this plus one to a plus two and then a plus three, etc. So yeah you can do that uh so it has the weapon potency rune which gives it the plus to hit and then it also has a slot that has the striking rune in it which gives it the plus one to damage so you can upgrade either or you know and then there's other potency runes there's other striking runes as well so you can just kind of change things around it's pretty cool how magic items work and uh in so very cool can they move to another weapon uh i think so yeah i think there's a some type of crafting check that you need to do from what my memory what i'm remembering i think you have to do a check to successfully pull the rune out without damaging it but yeah i think you can as long as the weapon sword yeah as long as the weapon has the slots you know you're because it only because our armor is the same way Armor has like a potency rune for your armor class, and then it has another rune slot to where you can add like some type of resistance or some other type of effect or, or something like that. So, you know, magic items are totally customizable in Pathfinder 2, which is really cool. I like that. And then, like I said, you can also take those runes and you can spend the money and upgrade them too from a, like a plus. So, yeah, this thing's pretty gnarly, dude. Yeah. Anybody mind if I give it a swing? Uh oh, he's going two handed. I like it. I like that. So yeah, uh, a little bit of homework. Why don't you guys read a little bit about uh, read about your spells? Get a little bit more familiarized with your spells, and then start reading about magic items and how you can switch out the the different runes. I got so, some questions on level up too. It says uh, mm -hmm. you get ability boost. It seemed like you got four different yeah. ability boost. Four. Two to anything that's under eighteen or plus. Under four. eighteen. Yep. Is or if right? it's eight, no, you're. That's right. Yeah. So every yeah, five level five is glorious. No, it's it's yeah. Level five is a nice glorious. level. Yeah. So but you yeah, can't put two boost in one stat, right? 
It has to be one, yeah. It has to be one one boost. You get to boost four abilities. If it's under 18, you get to add plus two. So if you have a 16 int, you can go to an 18 int. Or if you have an 18 int, you can go to a 19. So you can add plus one if it's 18 or higher. And there's no maximum with ability scores. Only at character creation, at the start of character creation. You can't go past an 18. But that's pretty awesome. You guys got four ability scores you can boost up. So why don't you guys take a look at the party sheet? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a quick Q&A with the stream. So I'm gonna let you guys uh, look at the party sheet. I want you guys to take everything out of the party sheet and put it on your character sheets, divvy it up. And then everything that is left in the party sheet, I'm gonna sell it as gold, and then I'll put it on your character sheets for you, okay? So, Very cool. Yeah, great game, guys. That was a great fight. It was getting a little hairy at the end, but Emu Emu, hey, man, he came through again. Hold it out in the end. He did. So, all right, a little bit of homework. Read your spells a little bit more. Get your characters leveled up to five, and enjoy those ability boosts, and read about runes and magic items. And is everybody sure. ready to go next week? All right, awesome. Great game, yeah. everybody. I'll see you guys next week. Great mask. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Good game, right. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.